And here with me now in Tuscaloosa is the former Democratic senator from Alabama, Doug Jones. He's a former U.S. attorney for Alabama. He's the author of Bending Toward Justice, the Birmingham church bombing that changed the course of uh, civil rights. And I'm going to talk to him about that in a little bit. First of all, good to see you, my good friend. Good to see you, Allie. Thanks I for coming I, to Alabama. Question number one is how you wear a jacket. Uh, on, a, on a summer morning look, in, in Tuscaloosa. Look, I get dressed up for folks that come down to visit in Alabama. That's just what we do here in the South, no matter how damn hot it is. I appreciate it. <laughs> I, uh, I missed you when I was last in Birmingham last year, so I'm really glad to, to talk to you uh, now that you're here. Uh, this bill was a surprise oh. to everybody that it was getting done. And, and, you know, normally when you look at a bill that compares to what the Build Back Better bill was, it's smaller, there's all sorts of criticism about it. It's right. not really there. It's a pretty impressive bill. It's an, a hell of an impressive bill. Uh, this is something, and I got to give credit to Senator Manchin and yeah. Senator Schumer. They kept this quiet. They worked through these problems. They knew they would be an issue. They knew they would have to talk to Senator Sinema. But what they did, they did two things. They one, they kept this quiet, and they got the chips bill done. Yeah. Senator McConnell had said he was going to hold that bill, which is a national security interest yeah. bill, by the way, was going to hold that hostage in case this reconciliation went forward. Well, they got that CHIPS bill done. It went over to the House. It's passed. It's in the law. And they announced this, this bill. And it is a really important bill. And it's important not only for the country. Yeah. It's important for this administration to let people know that Democrats are getting things done for yes. folks right now in, in the areas of climate, health care, reducing inflation. It is a big deal. Yeah, none of it's what everybody no, no. who has a particular area wants, but it's more than a little. You know, democracy is not what everybody wants. Yeah. Democracy is something about truth. It is about coming together to find common ground and moving our country forward. And that's exactly what this yeah. bill does. It's just a shame that it's not going to get any Republican support. They should be behind this. It is a step forward for the entire country. So a, a few weeks ago, people would have said uh, Biden's popularity numbers are low. Uh, Democrats are going to get trounced in the election. And by the way, it's all about the economy. And that's terrible. And nobody's going to vote for Democrats. So much has happened in the last <laughs> couple of weeks. L real legislation getting done. Uh, very strong economic numbers. And, and I, I always tell people, look, you can look at all the economic numbers you want, including the stock market. But jobs are right. where the rubber hits the road for people. Uh, this Kansas vote, it, it feels like there's a different energy in the air. There's no question. I, I, I've been telling Democrats across the country for a couple of months now that I'm tired of listening to all the Debbie Downers here. I'm tired of listening to people telling us that, that we're going to get trounced. We had things to be proud of even before this summer, the, the infrastructure bill, the, the, you know, the American Rescue Plan that has brought us to where we are out of COVID right now. And now, you know, this reminds me a little bit of the 2020 primaries. People counted Joe Biden out early on. They said right. he should drop out. He's too old. The whole nine yards. Well, as this summer went through, he does what he does best, and that is work with the members of Congress, work with the other side of the aisle, getting both bipartisan bills. And when he can't get that bipartisan bills, he works within the Democratic caucus to get this Inflation Reduction Act. There, and, and then you've got Kansas. And then that, that vote really is giving some people uh, encouragement. It's kind of, you know, Ali, some people told me the other day it was kind of almost like the vote in 2017 with, with my election. Yes. We heard so many times across this country that that election in Alabama in December 2017 gave people hope. This Kansas vote mm -hmm. gives people hope, and it's encouraging people to get out there. They've got energy. They're organizing. Um, and I think that going into this midterm, so we've, we've got more wind at our back now than we've got facing the headwinds. Let me ask you about that, because I thought about you at that time. Now that we're in Alabama, Alabama's not a liberal state. There's no right. way you can, no. you, can, you can parse that. Um, so there is work to be done, and Kansas proved that with the right argument, there is work to be done, particularly with moderates and, and conservatives who are working in good faith. Absolutely. I suppose, I mean, there's, a, there's a component of the Republican Party today that y y you can't talk to. Right. But there's a component that you can. Absolutely. And that is something you've lived in that space. Yes. So, so tell us a little bit more about what Democrats can do in this time, may not want to do it, but to engage moderates and Republicans. Yeah, look, I think that the Kansas vote, remember the Kansas vote was a vote for rights, and it was a vote to kind of keep the status quo. You compare that with what's happened with a gerrymandered legislature. Mm -hmm. Kansas was a vote of the people. Indiana was a vote of a gerrymandered legislature, and there's a big difference there. People in Alabama uh, are, not, are, are conservative, for sure, but they also believe in individual freedoms, and they believe in individual liberties. And we were happy with Roe versus Wade. People would say that, but those folks that were unhappy were either part of that group that were, you know, 
that was so far that you're never going to get to them, or they were just exploiting people for political gain. Right. And that's what we've seen happening right now. I believe that as we go forward, you're going to see folks, folks like this that we've got out here right now that have come out on an early Saturday morning, and they're going to be talking, and they're going to be going where people are, you know, because people in this country, they want to have their rights, they want to have their freedoms, they understand this, but we've got to go where, where people are. And understand, there is a, a, a religious component to this sure. that people need to meet with. And I have said all along, this is a health care issue, it's a moral issue, and we can find common ground. The biggest issue that I think we're going to face right now, and I heard some folks talking about it earlier, is issues of contraception and those things. If we can do more together, right and left, to lower the number of women who, and, and families, by the way, yep. who have to make these tough decisions, yep. We're going to, we will make considerable progress. I was shocked to find out how difficult it is oh. for people without insurance, women without insurance, to get contraception in this city. It is very, very difficult. But I'm, I'm going to tell you this. I think that the, the, our opportunities are right now because, you know, when you've got the Supreme Court decision and you've got a backstop, so it's easy to let politicians demagogue issues to death yeah. and run as far to the right as they can, knowing that there's a backstop there that's not going to happen. Well, this is kind of like that dog that caught the car, okay? Yes. Now they got to figure out what to do with yep. it, and people are going to start demanding. Once they see, once the people of Alabama and some of these other very red states see exactly the impact that these legislatures, these gerrymandered radical right legislatures are doing, I think they're going to demand changes, and they're going to start demanding it at that local level, and it's going to make some changes, and we're going to see a lot of changes in the future. It's not going to be overnight. No. No, but it but will, it's coming. That's a good setup for the conversation we're going to be having with uh, the, the panel that I met with because they are also saying don't give up. You did make a reference, by the way. I don't know if PJ can get the shot, but uh, to the folks who have gathered uh, to welcome us here in Tuscaloosa this morning. I don't know if we've got. Uh, PJ, do we, have a, do we have a picture of these great folks who have come <laughs> out to keep us company on a, uh, on a Saturday morning? There we go. Take a look at that. Thank you for welcoming us to your beautiful and somewhat warm town. Uh, uh, Senator, I want you to stick around for a second because sure. you have a, a very deep and rich history in, in civil rights. And there's a matter that occurred this week that I want to discuss with you uh, after the break. <laughs>